I brought my dad to open source to talk to YouTube creators, makers, artists, engineers, and everyone at this crazy Maker Faire style event. We both got to see and talk to hundreds of fellow enthusiasts about everything from cavity filters to coordinated LED art installations. But what were the coolest things we saw? I'll kick things off with the Dalek facts, which uh, if you haven't noticed in my studio for all my videos for years now, I've had this Dalek back here. The cool thing about this was there was another father-son duo. The dad was in charge of the mechanicals and the son was doing the electric. That's cool. And it was just cool to see, you know, father-son working together. I'm kind of biased towards that being a pretty cool thing because it's, it's great to work with your dad if, if your dad has a shared interest. So that Same was here. that was I think one of my favorite things. I didn't talk to the dad at all because mm -hmm. I was too like gun shy about it. Like I didn't, I don't know. I, I thought it was too cool of a thing to upset it because he had a little voice thing. Oh on yeah, the he whole was time. and he was busy too. Yeah. Were, like, everybody that came up, he was wheeling that thing and wheeling <laughs> that uh, deal in front. And yep. Don't get shot by the death ray. Explaining it's not a toilet plunger. I heard <laughs> him do that a couple times. Well, I, I like that crazy stuff. The Dal Dalek was one of them for sure. And, uh, they, but there was also a trash can <laughs> running around chasing after people, so was open up and breathing out smoke, looked like it was on fire half the time. And there was a chicken that ran around with a, uh, uh, a Roomba. Roomba with a yep. duster thing on it. They, they, they were, were having fighting a thing. Each other. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. And then there was the hot dog race, which was a personal favorite of mine since yes. the attachment to hot dogs. A lot of people at the event were like, oh, you're the hot dog guys, <laughs> after the uh, hot dog on the tower. Five, four, three, two, one. And then the Robot Wars of Destruction, which was just fun. We would be in that room. <laughs> if we were in that big room and you'd hear this, you know, these big sounds. And then hear big cheers. And yeah, and cheers would be able to yell. And then later we would get to walk by and you would see this just busted Finals. metal and motors and circuit boards out all over the place in this little arena they had. That was, that was fun too. Another thing that I liked on the floor that I, I, had, I had heard about it before and I even had it in my list of like, here's something I want to talk about someday in a video, was ADS-B. Yeah. And not just ADS-B, but ADS-B, like a buzzing bee. The cool thing about this is it uses a Raspberry Pi Pico, the little $1 chip, mm -hmm. instead of a more expensive FPGA to decode the 1090 signals. And in addition to that, he even has a dual band version that can use both PIOs on the Raspberry Pi, that little chip and it can decode data on the 978 megahertz band, which is cool. So you can see yeah. all the airplanes in the sky, yeah. no matter where on earth you are. And uh, one little fun fact is we were there and we were like, what does ADS-B even stand for? Like it's yeah. one of those acronyms yeah. that nobody knows. <laughs> it's the Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. And I love seeing the young creators out there. There's a lot of very youthful, uh, humans out there that are doing some great stuff. Uh, the ADS-B guy was a young yeah. guy and he was doing some cool stuff. And the uh, rocket area was full of tons of young people that had done rocket things. We we learned how to mix rocket fuel to make solid rocket fuel, sort of. Well, not every detail. Uh, but we did love the rocket area. One guy had the, the landing gear came out. He was trying to figure out, the other guy had a nozzle controller, mm -hmm. 3D printed one. It's like, oh, Showing no, how a PID loop works. Yep, exactly. And so it, it's just fun. And then meeting the Rubik's Cube solvers that have the yeah. world record right now of the fastest uh, machine to solve a Rubik's Cube. It was like 0.103 mm -hmm. seconds. And they had the machine there. <laughs> but it I needed, think like 100 milliseconds, something like that. It, 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 it needs a, and it needed uh, 240 volts to run fast three as phase, it can. Three, three phase power. <laughs> so crazy, it was fun. And then the, uh, there was the guy, young guy there, and I don't know if he made the whole thing because I never got to stop at the booth, but he uh, printed all kinds of brass instruments, yeah. tubas and, and trumpets. Plastic, and but coated in a way yeah. that they sound like brass instruments. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Very cool. You know, as somebody who had his father teach him how to solder, one of the mm. others, and it's solder for all you British people out there. You know. <laughs> no, but that, that's what we say. Anyway, it, for having that in my life, I, it was great to see all the repair stations around mm -hmm. the floor. I think I, I spotted at least three, and I think one, one guy was also doing mobile repairs, which is cool because you can help keep the exhibits alive. Many of these mm -hmm. exhibits are moving and stuff, and they break. So mm -hmm. helping people keep their exhibits going and also helping people, maybe it's their first time ever soldering something, their badge mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. So these, these badges that you get are blank PCBs, and uh, the soldering stations, the guys can help you to learn how to solder, to put you know, the LEDs yeah. in and the IC and all that kind of stuff. And then you end up with a little circuit that it's not this one, but it's like this, where 
it does something interesting. And I'll let mm -hmm. other people uh, show what the cool thing is that it does mm -hmm. at some point if you watch other people's videos on open source. So, and, and I, I too, I liked uh, the solder leads me to the, the thoughts about all the old tech made new booths that were there, yep. including Curious Mark, which was very cool. So you guys can check him out. Yeah, Curious so. Mark. Well, he was at a, a booth with Tube Time as well, mm -hmm. and uh, Ken Sheriff, and they were reverse engineering things from the Apollo era hardware. <laughs> yeah, I saw uh, that. There was also, I, I completely forgot, there was a CRT booth, and it had some wonderful signage mm -hmm. saying how dangerous things were. Yeah, don't touch our <laughs> don't phone. Touch if we're not here, don't touch anything. Yeah. I remember that. Yep. So that was, and then the Mac remade, like they had uh, people oh, repurposing. Tracks. All, all kinds of things with the Mac that drove around. There were Macs that had different screens in them and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. it, it, it was just fun. I love that seeing that, how people can creatively put to use uh, old tech in a new way or refurbish the old tech, which yeah. like Curious Mark and his group of guys or two or three guys, are, they were amazing. They so. make it better than new in yeah. a lot of cases. Yeah, exactly. They put in better spec equipment inside. Yeah. And, uh, in, you know, from a radio perspective too, there, there were a few different things talking about RF, but one of my favorites from last year and this year is the Mesh-tastic booth and seeing mm -hmm. the growth of that, uh, the use of that protocol, both from like amateur radio operators and from just the general public since it's mm -hmm. unlicensed spectrum. Yeah. Uh, and I've been working on a video that I didn't get finished before open source, I was trying to, about using uh, GNU radio, an SDR, and decoding Mesh-tastic So traffic. close. Yeah, well, <laughs> I couldn't quite get it finished, but uh, we'll, yeah. we'll get there soon. So check out the Jeff Gearling channel for that video that's coming. And, and Jeff, I also love the many booths where people were mixing tech made for this or that with software, open source software, and they were making products that, you know, just you don't think about too much. Like one guy had the Sonos system kind of thing that he built. He's like, he used standard chips for his audio processing piece and put a little thing together, put it in a box, and he picked a great speaker. Uh, that kind of stuff is really cool to repurpose uh, or, or replace things that are very expensive or proprietary. And proprietary, especially. So, uh, and then there's the guy, the Ubopod Automation, who, uh, what's he use? The, uh, Took the a core little software. Raspberry Pi 5 yep. and kind of modified things with Docker and his yes. own custom UI. Yeah, so he's got a nice little box. It looks good in the house, and he's trying to really, you could see from one year to the next, we saw him last year, yeah. how he's moving along with some uh, other improvements and things. So that kind of uh, fun. And then there was a workout machine that was like this big, it was like a motor and you pulled it, you could mount it, but your pull, you just say, I want a 200 pound or I want 150 pound. So you could see making workout machines and, and just taking the electronics, the motor controls and things that people have learned and the software that's out there and making it work with a totally new purpose. I, I love that. And there was a plenty of that up there. And since uh, my son enjoys chess, mm -hmm. all the little chess exhibits really caught my eye. But one in particular was from a student. I think he said he graduated high school and just in his spare time, he yeah. wanted to make a chess board yeah. that either plays itself or plays against a human. Yeah. And uh, he built it and he had, you know, talking through all the process, he, he mentioned like we did this and that didn't work. So we modified just that whole process in, in life, in engineering mm -hmm. especially, it will help immensely. Mm -hmm. And seeing a finished product that actually worked, there were little bugs in it, but mm -hmm. that's how they are. Mm -hmm. It actually worked, and uh, it's cool to see that, especially since I saw them on Sunday, which means it worked all through Saturday as well. Yeah, and, and those kids learn failure, 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 mm -hmm. and they find improvements. It's this very cool process to watch. It's great to hear them talk about it. They're always excited. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited because the next generation of makers and tinkers, mm -hmm. they have some tools now that uh, can give them even a leg up on, on what I had. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact exactly. that, you know, you can watch a YouTube video and learn some of these things too. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know of anyone who wouldn't have loved talking to the YouTube creators that were there. Uh, I liked especially the teacher creators, you know, the people who do yeah. stuff that, and we met several of them that, and they were all wonderful. And we had some, some of the conversations were very long and, and fun. And uh, you find out how much more they know than they even show on their channel. Some guys who have hobbies that go <laughs> deeper than like my main yeah. job ever was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's you know a bunch of people that apply uh, energy to everything they do, and they do stuff pretty well all the time. It, it was just fun. It, I don't think any of us would uh, deny that that's a great part of that whole mm -hmm. uh, show. That yeah, we a to. unique thing about open source that I don't think you see at some other in conventions for electronics and RF and things like that. It's great to see all the people that watch our channel, and mm -hmm. not all, but obviously, but a lot of people who watch our channel and came mm -hmm. out to the event get to talk to them about their projects or something mm -hmm. that we did that they kind of 
grew out of. Yeah. And uh, the the thing that was the coolest last year, I gave out a ton of Raspberry Pi Picos, little little mm -hmm. microcontroller boards. Yeah. And I had at least 10 or so people come yeah. up to me and show me a picture of the project that they did. Yeah. And they said that was the first that's, time that they ever used a Pico. That's pretty cool. And it's like, now now I'm like, maybe I should have tried harder to get something this year. <laughs> so I don't know. For next year, I'm going to have something good. I, yeah, I promise. Neat. So if you were also at Open Source, I know that's only a tiny portion of our audience, but maybe more next year, what did you like? We only got to see probably less than half of what was there. We tried walking everywhere, and we just couldn't and we're excited for next year. So if you want to go next year, check out opensauce.com.